Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, fishing accomplices, good morning and welcome back to fishing. So it is July 2nd right now, and we got a little bit of a, a pedal ahead of us because we are going fishing in Connecticut. Why Connecticut, you ask? Well, yesterday, July 1st, was the opening day of their limited tog season, which lasts from July to the end of August. I would have went yesterday, truth be told, but the wind was howling, so we're gonna have to make do with today. Uh, I'm not going all in on the tog, I might, uh, but we got some shore crabs. We're gonna try that out in some shallow structure. We sure know that those togs are around. We've been catching them even when we're not trying uh, when fluke jigging. But today we are going to actually try and catch some tog. Uh, they in Connecticut have an open season, New York does not. So before I get blasted in the comments, uh, it is legal to do this. Ironically, their sea bass season is closed for like the next week and a half. It reopens in mid-July, so that'll be an option as well. But today we are looking for tog during the slower tide and if that doesn't necessarily pan out, we're going to switch over to fluke. Uh, I do want to do some fluke jigging, but we'll do that once the, the tide really starts moving. But uh, that is what we got planned today, and hopefully we'll soon be on our way to getting some fishing. Accomplished. Okay, so we're going to fish these little shore crabs. Um, caught these yesterday. Didn't want to waste any time that we could be fishing today. Uh, time is limited as always. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna fish these in some fairly shallow, heavy structure and see what we can pull out and who is home. Okay, let's see if anyone's interested in some crabs. Tide is moving, probably more than I want it to be. This might be more opportune to fish for fluke, to be honest. We're already getting bit though. I think I already cleaned it out. There's a bite. Blackfish. That's a nice one. Oh yeah, that's a good start. That's a good start. Oh my gosh, look at that thing. <laughs> Yo, heck yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that thing. Let's uh, get away from this so we can get a proper look at this fish. inches thereabouts yeah it's about 18 so just a good size to eat okay great start Let's see if we can get one more as we're gonna be eating fish for the next two nights and it'd be great to get our minor limit we're in very shallow water though it's about 8 to 10 feet here on some very heavy structure just letting that jig sit, waiting for a few taps. And then uh, once you feel them pick up with it, you set the hook. It's as simple as that. Not anchored right now, just this is a spot I do not like to anchor in. And I just didn't bring the anchor period today because I figured if it was that difficult to stay in place, we're better off fluke fishing. So if that's the only tog we get, I'm, I'm fine with it. But let's see if we can get a few more. That's a one shot. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. That's our tog limit right there. That should measure up. It'll be close. Took it in one shot. He might be a little short, but if he's a keeper, we will give tog a break. He might be a little short. Yeah, 
Uh, he's about 15. Very close short, and it's a good sign when you find some of those larger males. Usually that means there's some quality fish there. At least that's what I found in the past. <laughs> cool looking fish. Not big enough, not even close. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, he's not that good. These fish just fight really hard for their size. It's like pure muscle. I'll take you today. Make some porgy patties. He's at least 12, he might be a little short for what we want. Let's see, if he's over 12, we'll keep him. He's like barely keeper, so I'm gonna let him go. It's like 11 and a half. Porgy, like to be a little bigger if we're gonna keep him today, but good to know they're down there. Definitely an option, we start jigging uh, plastic. Getting down to the wire on our first thing of crabs. We got gone through about half of them so far, so we'll fish till we run out or till we get our limit. But right now we're really just trying to work the same general piece of structure. We've kind of built the bite up, and that's kind of the key with tog fishing. I mean you can always move, but once you get a bite fired up, you want to try and milk it for whatever it's worth. At least that's what I've always figured. Especially since I don't have an anchor today. I'm just trying to really hover in this one spot where I'm kind of sheltered from the current. That current would be ideal for fluke fishing, but for tog, I just want to kind of stay in one place, get all those fish fired up, get everyone's attention. Okay, so that tog bite in that particular spot really started to fizzle out. I mean, I could have looked for another spot, but honestly, tide's getting lower and lower. It's getting very shallow in the shallows. So I think we're gonna move out a bit and try and find some fluke or porgies or wherever we can find the bottom. We're gonna find some boulders, some structure, and just kind of drift around there. I'm hoping we can put some kind of half decent bite together, but we're gonna keep an eye out for structure. We're gonna keep an eye out for bait. And between those two things, hopefully get on some good action. So it's always been like a goal of mine to get fluke and tog on the same stringer in places where it's possible that'll pretty much never be an option in new york but it is an option in connecticut so let's see if we can make that happen okay 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 you know what time it is folks as we switch to different types of fishing it's time to switch into some beverage action we got Lacroix, first time in the channel for a little while limoncello it's actually one of the better Lacroix. It's got a very rich flavor, like almost vanilla-y. Uh, it's hard to explain, but it, it feels rich. It feels like full-bodied, if you will. So, you know what? Why the heck not? Let's give us a solid nine. Nine on the LaCroix Limoncello. Let's hope we can upgrade the Scord's fishing trip to get some fluke. That'll definitely do it, but let's see what we can get into as we jig some soft plastics. Tried a few drifts, gotten a few hits. But they feel like potentially porgies, but I'll run through this one or two more times because there is life here and happy to be on some kind of action because that's a, a tough thing to come by a little bit west of here. So I'm gonna try the paddle shad. It's a good uh, catch all for a lot of these fish. Ooh. That's 
something alright. Maybe it's a porky. It's okay with. Yeah, nice porky. As long as he's over 12, which I think this one is. Gulp got much, so perfect timing. Let's see. Yeah, he's like 13, so sure. Join the club. Alright, well, we know there's porgies around. And while they're not fluke, I'll happily take them today because we need some fish for the next couple nights of dinner. Whatever this is, it's foul. Little porky. Okay, let's try in this area one more time. Just a slightly different trajectory. It's clearly fish here, it's just not necessarily what I'm looking for so far, but let's try a different part of this structure and see if we can get on something. There is bait around, but it looks like bigger bait, most likely, like bunker, like that. It looks fairly substantial. Could be wrong, but... Here we go. That's a fluke, I think. Alright. Okay. Gotta start somewhere. Looks like there should be some fluke here. And we'll let him go. Quick release. I'm certain that a lot of the bites I'm getting are porgies, so I'm pretty sure a lot of them are just missing the hook due to the size of the profile, so we're going to switch the Elias V Mini Mackinac Shad uh, tip with some Procure. Mini Mackinac Shad. There he is. Little guy. See, this is what's ruining all my gulp. I know there's some better ones down there. There he is. Might be a better one. Well, good to see nothing's changing. It's a consistent tog bite on plastic. All right, well, that was a bit of a challenging day, uh, in a fun way, I suppose. Uh, I think part of the challenge was trying to split the day between the tog fishing and the bottom fishing with plastic. I think if I really just focused on one and didn't split it, I probably could have done better in the long run, but either way, I had a good time. We got to leave with some fish. I think the big takeaway too is, uh, you know, I probably could have explored a little bit more uh, for both of the fish, but Ultimately, I didn't have a ton of time, so I just decided once I found some fish to try and, you know, push for everything it was worth to mix results. But either way, uh, a good day in the water in the Western Sound. Okay, so I decided to switch this one up and do a catch and cook of the tog and porgy that I got. Uh, in this particular recipe, we're doing a peanut noodle sauce uh, over the fish. So let's start off with the sauce. Uh, I will flash the ingredients. I'm voicing this over because uh, I shot this video during my daughter's dinner time and baby shark was playing in the background. I figured no one really wanted to hear that. So right now I'm just flashing the specific components of the sauce. Uh, basically, it's pretty simple. You just mix all these things up into a container. Uh, I use a jar. Uh, my wife actually made it this time, but we go back and forth and just whisk them all together uh, to basically make a sauce that you will put over the pasta, the fish, and the stir fry. And as you can see, I'm holding it right now. Next, for the prep work of the fish, we have some cornstarch, which I am setting aside in a Tupperware, like so. Uh, we're going to be putting the fish in there shortly. Afterwards, uh, I'm receiving the tog uh, from the day before. I had it in a paper towel just to kind of soak up some of the moisture. Uh, we got our tog right there, uh, the porgies mixed in as well, and basically we're just going to set that down and we're going to chop this into very small, you know, like little bite-sized pieces uh, because the idea is they're going to be like little, you know, chunks that'll be within the stir fry. Uh, not so unlike how you'd probably use chicken in a similar recipe. Next, we're getting our wok and putting some canola oil on it. Uh, we're not going crazy with the oil, just enough to like lay down and coat the pan. We're not trying to deep fry this fish, just to get a nice, you know, 
initial cook, so don't go crazy with it. So after that, uh, we finish cutting up all the fish as the pan is, you know, starting to heat up slowly, cutting it all into small little cubes. And eventually when you have your finished product, all the fish will be in small cubes uh, like this. We're then going to take the fish and little by little just dip it into the cornstarch and place it into the wok and cook it till it's probably about two thirds the way done. Um, the way I usually judge this is to, you wanna see it be slightly opaque. You don't wanna fully cook it through. Uh, the reason for that is once you get the fish to the point of being you know, opaque, you're gonna set it aside. And once all the fish is done, you know, kind of keep it warm. You're gonna cook your vegetables and all your stir fry components. And then finally you are going to return the fish to the stir fry and it'll finish its cooking there so like the fish can kind of meld with the vegetables. All right, so now we are back. We got the fish in with the stir fry. Uh, the stir fry was cooked, you add the fish last. Basically that allows the fish to complete its cooking process and release some of its oils and you know fish juices into the stir fry. So pretty appealing. That's one of the reasons why we don't cook it all the way through in that initial cornstarch uh, entrance into the pan. but. Regardless, we're going to get some ramen noodles going and then we'll top the dish and finish it off. Okay, for plating, we put the ramen noodle on the bottom of the bowl. We then top it with the sauce that we made earlier. Uh, it's really your preference how sauce you want to be, it, but I do like to have a fair amount of sauce uh, covering both the noodles and the stir fry, which includes the fish and vegetables. We're then going to top that with some peanuts uh, for garnish. Throw that on the top uh, to add some crunch. And then finally, we're going to add some various uh, seasonings, uh, for a cock, I believe it's called. So we'll get that going on the bowls. And then finally, you know, all that's left to do is eat your dinner. All right, so this meal is finished and plated. A uh, serious shout out to my wife for helping put the finishing touches on it. So without any further wait, let's, uh, let's get a blackfish piece because that's why we're here. Let's not kid ourselves. There it is, got some broccoli, some peanuts, porakake. Uh, the ramen will be its own thing. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, if you like uh, peanut noodles, Thai stuff, whatever, this is definitely something to check out, so. Excuse me, you can definitely do this with any kind of white, um, you can definitely do this with any kind of white fish that you catch in New York waters work with porgy it work with fluke but i really like doing this with blackfish or potentially sea bass just because it holds it together a little bit better but definitely check this one out let me know if you like this kind of stuff i've got more recipes to potentially show but if not uh, this will just be a one and done for a while but thanks for watching as always thank you for your support catch you the next one goodbye from fishing